After removing the charger from the box, the screen protector from the display, Samsung is now removing high performance from its S series flagships. Welcome to this week's episode of Retech, where we discuss the most important news from the world of technology and some silly ones along the way. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Tracky Tech English, and like Samsung, please don't throttle our performance and hit that red subscribe button. Oh, Samsung! Oh, Samsung! You pulled a one plus. The news is that Samsung has been caught throttling benchmarks on a list of ten thousand apps. Yup. And that list includes popular games like Genshin Impact and popular apps like Netflix and TikTok. But what's suspicious is that benchmark apps were not included on that list. So Android police decided to test it out. They went ahead and spoofed the name of the popular benchmarking app 3D Mark to Genshin Impact, and immediately saw a drop in performance of about 54 to 58 percentage. And that's definitely a huge issue. And Samsung has acknowledged it as an issue as well, and has offered to provide a high performance mode for users like you and me, the nerds. But if you are a regular user, I'm sure that you don't care too much about this performance throttling, or probably don't even know about it. If you are one, let me know in the comment section below. Now the second news is a more serious one. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has actually caused a hit to Russia's technology sector. Latest news is that Intel and AMD have suspended component shipments to Russia and Belarus. But before that, Apple had temporarily stopped sales of its products through Apple stores in Russia and also limited the use of Apple Pay as well. So if you wanted to buy an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac right now, you cannot do that in Russia. Leading to this enraged Russian gentleman who made this video. So, do you think this is the right move by big tech companies? Let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> yup, I didn't attend the MWC Barcelona this year and ended up missing a lot of the action. First things first, Honor launched two phones. That's the Honor Magic 4 and the Magic 4 Pro, both of which come with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and won't be coming to India. But what is expected to launch soon in India are the Realme GT2 and the Realme GT2 Pro, both of which were also showcased at the event. Both of which are also Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 based phones. You already know about these phones, but what's more important is that crazy fast charging tech showcased by Realme and Oppo. So your Oppo and Realme phones in the future can charge at 150 watt speeds, which means they can go from zero to 100 in 15 minutes for a 4500 mAh battery. Now you must be wondering, what about the battery health of your phones? Then, don't worry about that. Oppo has ensured that you will get 1600 charge cycles, even with this technology, which is double the number of charge cycles that Xiaomi promises with 120 watt charging. And you know what the fun fact is? Oppo is not launching the first phone with 150 watt charging tech. It's actually going to be OnePlus. But even funner is the fact that Oppo actually showcased a 240 watt charging test, which is still in R&D, and apparently it can charge your phone, the same 4500 mAh battery, from zero to 100 in nine minutes. Nine. Where are you guys running off to? What, what, do you really want to charge your phone this fast? This reminds me of that Louis C.K. rant where he tells us how progress in technology has made us more impatient. In the 21st century, we take technology for granted. Well, yeah, because now we live in an, in an amazing, amazing world, and it's wasted on the on the crappiest generation of just spoiled idiots <laughs> that don't care. Because this is what people are like now. They got their phone, and they're like, "Ugh, it won't." Give it a second. <laughs> give it, it's going to space. Can you give it a second to get back from space? Now, in news number four, Asus finally launched its baby. Yeah, I'm talking about the Eight Z, and it's obviously I'm going to be calling it the baby because it took nine whole months to launch from the global launch date in India, and it's in the world of smartphones, it's also the size of a baby. Right? right? Bad jokes aside, while it might be a little too late to launch this phone, I absolutely love it. It's so cute. Chunnu munnu tunnu. It looks very nice. Cute it is. And even for that asking price, you do get a very powerful chipset. You get that really dainty sized phone. You get IP68 rating as well, and of course, fairly decent battery life too. Asus has done a very good job. It's a phone worth considering for a certain set of niche users. But I like to bring attention to a really fun fact: the Asus 8Z, while it seems really small, the S22 is actually equally small. 
By the way, Asus has really been in the news this week, and this is our WTF news of the week. Asus completely blindsided me and 91 mobiles. I mean, they made a special announcement about an OLED device, which they didn't clearly mention whether it's going to be a TV or not, but we ended up presuming it anyway because the campaign was revolving around TVs. And obviously, Asus made a fool out of us. What they launched was the VivoBook Slate. Now, this VivoBook Slate is like a Surface Go replacement. It runs Windows 11 and it's like a tablet with a keyboard. I'm not really a fan of Windows 11 tablets, but yeah, I mean, it's a good device to consider. So yeah, while the product didn't work for me, their online marketing strategy definitely worked. Very smart. Now, in the final news of the week, while we are all waiting for that redesigned Mac Mini with M2 chip, popular YouTuber Quinn Nelson from Snazzy Labs went ahead and made the current M1 Mac Mini 78% smaller. Hats off to you, sir. By the way, I've already made a detailed video around what we think is going to launch at the 8 March Apple event peak performance. If you haven't watched it yet, go check it out over here. Now, coming back to the redesigned Mac Mini by Quinn, he went ahead and removed that 150 watt power supply inside it and replaced it with a 65 watt Microsoft power supply and attached a MagSafe connector. Since that M1 chip is very power efficient, this absolutely works no problem. And in any case, for more ventilation, Quinn's team went ahead and redesigned it, 3D printed the case in that very unique cheese grater design of the Mac Pro. Really cool stuff, Quinn. I am a fan. So yeah, that's it for this week's episode of Retech. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have a lot of fun making these videos. So if you do enjoy it, don't forget to share it with your friends, like, comment, and of course, subscribe to our channel as well. Until next time, keep tracking and stay safe.